Good afternoon. Um, thank you all, and, and certainly thank you. I'll, I'll echo what uh, Senator Bach said about thanking the governor for allowing us to use this space as well. I think it was easier for you, and that was uh, that was the goal. So, um, and maybe before I begin, I'll just echo what he said about uh, trying to make life easier as we go through the. Uh, legislative session. I was in the Capitol this morning and it is uh, really torn up. So uh, whatever we can do to make everybody's life easier, uh, certainly reach out to me if we can be helpful in that. So um, as to the, the, uh, the forecast, um, obviously there are some, some signs on its, on its face that, that look good. Um, but as you dig a little deeper, there are some things that are concerning about the forecast. Um, it is certainly uh, the first time in a while that we've seen uh, the revenues uh, forecasted uh, lower now than uh, than they were the last time around. Um, we hope that's not a trend, and and we see the economy turning back south. Um, we've been talking an awful lot about that out on the out on the campaign trail uh, this last summer, and and we know that Minnesota families uh, really haven't seen the sort of uh, economic uh, benefit or or surplus in their own family budgets, and this is something that really is concerning. And we know that that's what drives uh, Minnesota's economy. So um, I agree with uh, Commissioner Showalter that uh, this isn't necessarily what we would call a rosy uh, economic uh, outlook for the state. Um, but this is just pre a preliminary look for us. Um, we, we will set our budget off of the February numbers. So um, some of the things I'm concerned about, not just that, uh, you know, the fact that they're downgrading the revenues um, in the 16-17 biennium, um, but also that the, uh, the wage growth has been downgraded as well. Um, I think that's concerning, and, and really knowing that it's that wage growth and, and uh, Minnesotans that drive the economy, um, that really is a concerning thing as well. So we want to make sure that we return our priority back to Minnesota families. Um, I've talked an awful lot about that on the campaign trail with folks throughout the summer. Uh, we know that's important to them. They need to see wage growth um, in their own budgets, and that's going to help the state as well. Uh, but as we work through this next budget, uh, we're going to prioritize uh, the things that I've talked about all along. We're going to prioritize uh, seniors, uh, veterans, and those uh, most vulnerable in our society. Uh, we're going to put a priority on roads and bridges. Uh, we're going to put a priority on education and, and specifically uh, closing the achievement gap. Um, and, and most of all, we're going to put a priority on growing Minnesota's economy. And, and, and that's what I'm afraid of uh, with, this, uh, with this economic forecast. So, um, we really want to make sure that we're growing wages for Minnesotans and, and growing Minnesota's economy. So, Senator Hamm. Thank you, and thank you all for being here. I, to me, it's a little bit of a disconnect to be in here at this room and hear the presentation from Commissioner Showalter and the governor and, and the sort of celebration that we've got the state budget flush again and uh, uh, our budget is in great shape and great news. I'm not so sure that the families in Minnesota are feeling that their budgets are flush. I think they're worried about rising health care costs. I think they're worried about how to make ends meet as they face uh, Christmas season. Uh, I think there's a lot of concern. And it seems to me that there's a lot of emphasis on the part of the majority and the governor. Uh, how do we grow the state budget? How do we make it bigger? How do we collect more revenue? How do we raise more taxes? We just had a $2.5 billion uh, tax increase and massive spending increases. And now we've got a surplus. And we're already talking about raising more taxes. I think uh, it raised some real concern. I, we should not be focused on how to grow the state budget, but we should focus on how to grow the economy. I hope that a, as a part of this discussion we have, and I think the governor seemed to be open to it, that we talk about uh, real comprehensive tax reform with a view of trying to create the conditions that will allow economic growth. I think we've all heard the anecdotal sto stories, and I think we see some things in this budget forecast that, that give suggestions that people maybe are not looking at Minnesota as the most friendly place for investment. People are packing their bags to leave the state to go other places. We want to send the message that maybe you should delay doing that, stay here. Let's get our tax policies right. Let's do some real reform and see if we can create economic growth. I look forward to working with the new majority in the House and with the governor to see if we can accomplish that. Thank you. Well, what I, what I think these numbers show is that hardworking Minnesota taxpayers have been overtaxed. and. Um, it's not reflected, though, in their own pocketbooks. So while, while the state is growing its budget, hardworking Minnesotans aren't feeling that at home. We can see that through the slow wage growth, through the, the fact that the economy's outlook is weakened. And so I, I find it interesting that, that uh, there have been reports already of, of plans by the, some of my colleagues on the other side 
on how they want to spend every last dime of, of the budget surplus. And I think we need to be cautious. And the message that we sent when we were campaigning is that we wanted to come and bring balance to Minnesota. So I think we have to be very cautious when we move forward. And the framework that we will use is that we're going to look at our needs, we're going to find out what they cost, and then we'll create our budget as opposed to just you know, coming forward and say this is how we're going to spend every last dime of the surplus. Because frankly, as Senator Hand said, we, we want to focus on growing the economy and not just focusing on growing the state government has been done in the last couple of years. Thank you. Questions? Uh, speaking of, uh, Senator Bach just said that he didn't see any room in, in the surplus to fund uh, roads and bridges in, in the general fund. Do you <coughs> agree with that? And how else do you think you can come up with money? You know, this is a, uh, obviously something that's been talked an awful lot about. It's, it's something that I think will be a, a very important issue uh, this next session. Um, our members are really ready to roll up their sleeves and dig into it. I think, I think what we need to do is, is before we assume that the only answer is to, to increase the gas tax or some other new revenue, uh, let's really dig into the problem, see what's causing it. Uh, I know that we're spending more money on transportation right now than we ever have in the state's past. Um, where are we spending it? Where is it going? How are we spending it? Um, and are we being the best stewards with uh, tax dollars that we can be? Let's look at everything before we uh, make those determinations. And I know we've got a little bit of time to do that, but uh, uh, I know those are going to be um, some of the most important issues uh, this session. Uh, but our members are really ready to roll up their sleeves and work on it. Do you see, Mr. Speaker, any situation under which your caucus might agree to some form of revenue? increase for transportation as I speak, you know. You know, I have said all along, and, and while I don't think that a, a gas tax is the answer and, and I don't think that it's likely, uh, I have said all along that every option's on the table. Um, and the reason I say that is it would be disingenuous for me to say uh, we're going to dig in, analyze the problem first, and then come up with the best solution. Maybe that is the best solution. I don't think that it is. It's, it's right now incredibly unpopular with the public. Um, and frankly, over the last two years, uh, Democrat policies have taken more and more money out of family budgets, uh, and increasing the gas tax only furthers that. And, and believe me, this is a really important issue to me. Uh, I come from a district uh, that really was, and I know I've told you this before, uh, really was a, a boom and a bust. Uh, when times were great in Minnesota, things in, in my district, we had some of the highest uh, growth rates in the country, uh, new housing starts, those sorts of things. Um, and, and during the, the downturn, uh, we had some of the highest foreclosure rates in the country. And I feel like one of the biggest differences was the fact that much of my area, it's a, it's a bedroom community and they commute into the cities. So, um, you know, adding more to their budgets and, and gasoline, uh, that was over a time, remember, when gas went from $2 a gallon to $4 a gallon. Um, and, and it made it unbearable and, and it found the broken, breaking point for many of those family budgets. So uh, we're going to look really close uh, before we make any of those kind of decisions. Uh, taking more money out of the economy and out of family budgets uh, isn't driving good economic growth. And I think uh, the bottom line is that's what we can see today from this forecast. Mr. Speaker, why is it so hard to say that Minnesota's economy is doing pretty good and the state's in good shape right now? looking at this budget forecast. Sure, I mean, we'll, we can look through uh, the, the, the numbers. Uh, at the end of session, I mean, literally at the last uh, revenue forecast, uh, the, the surplus was $2.599 billion, okay? When the Democrats were done with that at the end of session, it was somewhere between $570 and, and $602 million. Uh, million. So that was, that was our baseline today. Uh, today that's improved what looks like in the 1617 biennium about 90 million dollars but not because revenues have increased because spending is projected to be less revenues have actually been downgraded by about 400 million dollars in the next biennium so it's that's not a concerning trend job that the legislature and the governor did well, I mean, I look back to what happened. I mean, we had an unbelievable economic growth and, and recovery of the state's economy during the Republican budget. Uh, that's, that's without question. I mean, we had $3.4 billion worth of surplus revenue uh, as a result of that budget. Uh, today now we're downgrading uh, what was projected to be a, a, you know, we're downgrading the revenue by about $400 million in the tails. That's, that's undeniable. Um, it's the first time, I think, in, in probably eight, nine, ten 
revenue forecasts where we've seen an actual downgrade in future revenues. Um, so I, as I said when I started, I hope that's not a trend, um, but there are things to be concerned about in this revenue forecast. Uh, Majority Leader Box suggested that there, he might try to fast track some sort of tax, con tax conformity bill. Are your caucuses on board with that and how far do you want it to go? Well, you know, I think, uh, and San uh, Senator Hand can jump in here too, uh, you know, I think we're certainly going to take a look at that. Uh, there were, uh, Democrats over the last two years stopped short of full federal tax conformity. There were things that they didn't do uh, that really would have helped Minnesota families. So uh, we're certainly going to look at that. We know it's important. We know the timeliness of it is, is important as, as we approach tax season. So uh, I can't guarantee that it, it'll happen because I, I'm just one guy, but I, I, I think that it certainly will be a priority for us, and I'll let Senator yeah, I, I think uh, we're going to certainly, depending on what they offer, but assuming they offer a tax cut in effect to conform with the federal tax code, I think members of our caucus would certainly support that. Uh, as I said, I think we all believe on our side that we should be looking at comprehensive tax reform with a view of trying to make our economy stronger. I, I, we don't buy into the fact that, or the argument that by spending more money at the state level and raising more taxes, that somehow translates to economic growth. We don't believe that. We don't think this budget uh, supports that. So we are very interested in finding ways to make sure the people of this state get to keep their money to spend on their priorities, not on what the state thinks is a priority. Speaker, you emphasized this revenue downgrade, revenue projection downgrade. How does your caucus want to solve that problem and, and the, the, the wage stagnation, I guess, is something? Well, say. you know, I, I look at, uh, you know, the last two bienniums as, a, as, a, as kind of a night and day difference on how tax policy can affect Minnesota's economy. Uh, you know, when we, t when we took over, literally when I was sworn in here for the first time, uh, we faced a, 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 about a $6 billion budget deficit. We balanced that without raising taxes, and we knew Minnesota's economy was going to recover. We're not going to take credit for that. Uh, it was recovering already. That recovery had started. But we knew that taking more money out of the, the, the budgets of Minnesota families uh, was going to hurt the economy. Um, fast forward, you know, uh, Democrats chose to, to implement one of the largest tax increases in state history, really at a time when we were arguing that was unnecessary. Um, and, and what we've seen now is, is that we haven't seen this sort of economic growth that we really hoped. That, that trend had, hasn't continued. Um, so that's what's concerning to me. And I hope that it hasn't turned back the other direction. Uh, but, you know, for Speaker Thiessen to stand up here and say that uh, the economy or the recovery hasn't flatlined, um, I think we're not looking at the numbers. Uh, it's, you know, we've down, we're, we're, today we're downgrading uh, the revenue by $400 million uh, in the next biennium. That's, that's concerning. If we spend all of this money, um, it will not be a good uh, fiscal situation for the state of Minnesota. Yeah, and to, to reverse that situation, as you say, is occurring, what are you proposing? Do, do, you, do you want to see business taxes reduced? Well, uh, or, or? you know, we're going we're gonna, to, again, we're going to probably look at everything, but uh, we, need to, we need to figure out a way. I, I truly believe that it's the budgets of Minnesota families that drive our economy, and it's, it's their jobs, job growth, you know, wage, wage growth. It's those things that drive Minnesota's economy, and, and we need to put uh, tax policy in place. Uh, that will be helpful to them, put more money in the budgets of Minnesota families. Uh, so those are the policies we're going to look at. So you're talking about tax credits for individuals or could be, or possibly a income tax reduction for some group of individuals? I, I think we'll look at everything. But we really, I think we need to analyze the, you know, we've just seen this, these numbers for a few hours. Of course, these are the preliminary ones. We're going to see the February forecast. Um, you know, once, once we have a little better grasp on is there really a trend here and what might be causing that trend, uh, we can put some, some stop gaps in place or some incentives in place uh, to help get the economy uh, growing. If there were income tax reductions in the mix, would you advocate that they be across the board or that they be targeted more heavily toward the job creators, as we say, in other words, the, basically the fourth bracket or upper bracket? Folks? Are we going to tax or Sorry. cut taxes for the rich? I, you know, I, I think that, that really every, everything uh, is, is we need to analyze everything, and, and I, I don't know that we can derive that any one thing uh, is, is causing revenues to be downgraded, um, uh, but we'll certainly look at that. I think, I think we need to make sure that we're looking at things that will help all Minnesotans, and that's really where we want to put our focus. You argued in the last uh, campaign that the tax hike on the job creators is responsible for dragging the economy down. Uh, therefore, you've got the money, you could reduce those taxes. Um, it, it potentially uh, can. I know I, I spoke with the governor here uh, in the last few weeks, and, and he himself said that he would be open to uh, cutting the corporate income tax. Uh, you know, the, the, certainly we need to understand 
uh, that if we make it more difficult for job creators to create jobs in Minnesota, we're going to end up with less jobs. I mean, there is definitely a, 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 a reaction when you, when you change policy like that. So uh, let's incentivize job growth. Let's incentivize uh, uh, wage, wage growth uh, for Minnesota families. That's what we want to focus on. That tax hike on the highest income Minnesotans. I don't know if that would accomplish what we want to, but we'll certainly look at that. What about overall? I asked Governor Dayton if a billion dollar surplus just makes governing easier, and he said, yeah, this means the session should get done on time, and we shouldn't have a showdown, a shutdown again. Can you guarantee those I think things? I think it probably does. I've been saying all along, I don't see any reason that we would have a, a, a shutdown. I hope nobody's talking about that. Um, I, I think this does make our job easier. I mean, we've, we've just come through a, a, a long period of uh, of, of deficits and and you know the recovery obviously started back in 2010 and we had a, a very strong recovery uh, for the for the first por portion of that um, you know we certainly uh, want that to continue I, I very sincerely believe that Minnesota families aren't seeing the full benefit of this economic recovery and and we really want Minnesota's economy to grow and we want uh, Minnesota families to feel that um, so that's where our focus is going to be as far as how you know we'll get along and we'll work together um, you know I think we've I think this probably does make our job easier um, and and I think as long as we all are willing to sit down uh, work on the problems that Minnesota families and, and Minnesotans want us to work on and and find solutions that are going to help them we're going to get out of here on time and and we'll have a successful session Looks like you have a new deal. I do. <laughs> and before we go, I just want to say that the best communications director in the House GOP caucus has a birthday today. So please join me in wishing Susan Klossmore a happy birthday. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> Thank you all.